Hello! Today I'd like to show you how to have a little bit of fun making a novelty print uh, uh, quilt. Um, probably something like an I Spy quilt, uh, which just means that they've got pictures and things on that perhaps a child might enjoy so that you can go play the little I Spy game and find aeroplanes and all sorts of other funny things. So I have just a few five inch squares in my collection. So I've got gathered together some novelty fabrics here and some stripes and dots and some that really just read as a plain sort of colour so there's not a lot going on on those and that's so that we get a little bit of um, variety within the quilt so first of all I'm just going to I've already picked out a few here I'm just going to lay them out into a nine patch so I've got a novelty in the corner then one of my colours then another novelty then a colour and a stripe or a, an obvious dot in the middle and then just another colour. Then we're going to have another um, novelty, then our colour again and then another novelty. So you can see this will actually, if I join all those up together, um, that's going to make a nice nine patch. So just my four corners are actually the novelty fabrics. I've got a stripe or an obvious, it could have been something like um, this obvious dot maybe, it doesn't really matter. I'm not particularly trying to match colours. I have discovered over the years that uh, children, particularly young children that like things like this, really like things to be quite busy. Probably busier than I like them. I like a little bit of calm in my life. Um, but So we'll go with a little bit of busy for the children and we'll go with a little bit of calm which is these sort of colours and maybe the dot or stripe in the middle. So first of all I'm just going to join them up into a nine patch. Now I know you have, know how to do that, but I thought I'll just show you how I do it. So I'm picking up my first two, just going to do my quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm, I, if I was making a quilt like this, I would be working on a block like this. So I'd be making up my nine patches in units. So I've got my quarter inch seam allowance to pick up my next two that, that were down below the previous two and just keeping them in the same order so I underneath I've got my left hand side square each time and the the next one is sitting on top right sides together so I'm going to feed that one through with my quarter inch seam allowance and then I'm going to come back and pick up the next two and again keeping that one that's on my left underneath flipping that one over and sewing this seam here and then back to the sewing machine so I'm just chain piecing through this little nine patch block well actually quite a large nine patch block. Now I'm going to take that out of the machine and if I open that out again so you can see where I'm up to this is all fairly basic but nonetheless sometimes it helps to see what we're doing now I'm going to do the same thing with this row. So I'm going to pick this one up and flip it over onto here. And then I'm going to come back and get the next two to do the same thing. So we'll just quickly run that through. So they're still all attached. And now I know that if I open that out, I'm ready to put my next square on top. So this is quite a fun way of joining up rows of things. And my last one that will go on here, flip that over. And now I'm going to take that out of the machine. And I'm actually just going to press that. Now, if I had lots and lots of seams, I might consider not pressing and pressing at the end, but I do like to press as I go. So whilst it's a little bit awkward when everything's attached, I'm going to leave them attached. I'm still going to press the top row and I'm going to press the seams all one way. And then I'm going to do the miss the middle row and do the next row and again those seams the same way as the top row so just get those pressed down nicely and then I'm going to turn it round 
and do that middle row and press the seams again in that same direction. You could have turned it and pressed them the other way but I find it very hard to make the iron turn around in my hand. So I find it much better to turn the fabric. So I'm pressing that middle row. So what I've ended up with is three rows still joined together and on the back side I've got my seams going that way, then that way, then that way. So that when I draw, now I'm going to pick these up and join them together, the seams will just nestle in together. So because one's going one way and the next one's going the other way, etc. So now I'm going to go back to the machine. So still joined up, we're not losing the direction of our fabrics and which way they go. I have done big quilts joining up blocks and things this way. But it's not always a benefit to do this, but on something like a nine patch like this, it's it's easy. You don't lose the position of your fabrics and things like that. So just butting those little seams, you can usually feel when they're nestled one against the other there. It's always so much fun to make quilts um, with children in mind because they love the bright and the novelty. Okay, so I've got one row of my nine patch joined up. Now I've just got this other row to do. So again, I'll flip that over and those seams will butt together as we get to them. And then we'll have a nine patch. We'll give it a quick press. seams matching. Sometimes you've got a lot of bits and pieces of fabrics and you're not sure what to do with them and if there's enough to get a five inch square out of them there's enough to make all sorts of things out of them. Okay so I'm just going to quickly press that now. Now it doesn't really matter which way these seams go at this stage so I'm just going to press them both in the one direction. My ironing board's not quite big enough for this block. And this one, I always press from the right side and it, I find it gives me a nice, I just hold that up and let that lay over the seam, that just presses over really nicely. Okay, so now I've got a very nice nine patch block here, but we're not finished yet. So now I'm actually going to cut that up so I'm going to lay it on my board and I'm going to line it up with the lines on my board. Hopefully if it's not sitting quite square you can go back to the iron and press it again. Often the pressing might slightly distort it but usually it's quite fixable. Um, so I've lined it up with my lines on my board and I've got it sitting at, at, on a halfway... How much does that block measure? That should be measuring currently 14 inches. So we can sit it there at 14 if it seems easier. So that's sitting quite nicely at 14 inches. And so I actually want to cut that in half now. So this, because I've got the 14 inch sitting there on my 7 inch line, which is half of 14, I'm going to cut through that block in half. Just like that. And now I'm going to turn them around and I'm going to cut them again. So again, line up with your 14 inch and cut again on that seven inch line. All that work and we've cut it all up. But aren't these fun little blocks? Same thing with this last one. Line it up and cut through, just make sure it's sitting nice and central, cut through on that seven inch line there. So now we've got, if we were to join all that back together again, that's where we started. And now, if we just turn everything around, we've got a whole new block and we can join that up together again. And isn't that a fun block? So I'm just going to give you a couple of ideas now of other things that you might do um, with this particular little block. I'm just going to move these out the way. Um, you might do several of those and join them together. So I'll just lay out, I've done a couple others ahead of time just so that I could show you this. 
So this one, here started out as a fun block like that with my stripe in the middle and now I'm going to just the same thing I'm going to flip those around so that the stripes out on the corners and if you do it this way those stripes will stay the same way up whichever way it is that you've started with and I'm going to lay those next to the other ones and I've got a couple more blocks here which I'll quickly that out there. Again, I started off with this time with a dot in the middle. Oops. And my colours. And again, I'm just going to flip those out like that. So what we're getting now is this really nice combination of colours in between some quite busy fabrics which to me just calms things down a little bit um, it's not entirely calm of course um, but nonetheless quite a nice um, way so again that was how my block started and I'm going to flip those corners out to the outside corner now you might come up with a little bit more rhyme and reason in where your dots and stripes go but to me that's quite a pleasing way of using up some five inch novelty fabrics and making a really fun bright children's quilt. Now another option for the layout could be that you simply turn the blocks so that one's up and one's down and then you would do the same thing here. You'd alternate, oops that was already in the right place, that one goes up and that one comes down and so that you then end up with this another option of, of the layout so really you could just play for hours I've probably given you something to start with and you might not leave your same ones together you might mix them around for that sort of layout and um, there's one other suggestion I'd just quickly like to give you um, which would involve me moving all these as we do uh, and this will would be to perhaps put a little bit of sashing between each block again to create a little bit more um, calmness so I've just got a piece of fabric here rather than lots of strips at the moment which I'm going to lay out here and if we carefully place this is how I often check to see how my fabrics and things are looking before I go ahead and cut up bits so I might just lay them with a sashing strip amount of fabric in between them. Can you see them with all these little threads hanging off? But it just gives you a bit of an idea, hopefully, of um, oops, which way are we going? Of how it might look with a sashing. Probably got those around the wrong way, have I? Never mind. I'll let you work out how they go. But just to give you an idea again of, of that separation with a colour. Or you might go back to your original um, four that we had. Oops, not that way. Um, so that you've got sashing in between. Oh, I did that one wrong. Oh, we've still done it wrong. <laughs> so that we've got a bit of sashing around that sort of block there. So I'll just lay this one, this one over, and even that could be quite a fun way so this was really just to show you some of the possibilities that you can achieve again with with five inch squares because that's what I like to do but just playing around and um, I guess I'm trying to encourage you through some of these videos to have a little play to try different things out and that was just an idea for perhaps a novelty I spy of course you don't have to use Novelty I Spy fabrics, you could make this with quite different fabrics, but today I wanted to have a go at a children's quilt. Thank you.